Um, brothers and sisters, I am grateful to be here and to listen to all the speakers. I took notes, alhamdulillah, and I appreciate it. I hope you appreciate it, all, all the speakers who came before me. I'm only going to speak a, a, a few moments. Uh, about 41 years ago, we established Master the Taqwa in Brooklyn. And when we established it, 25 members, all of them African Americans, every one of them, 100% African Americans. Now, uh, Pre-pandemic, we averaged like 1,300 people for Juma. Now the people in my community, African Americans, maybe 20%, maybe 25%. We have 39 different nationalities in our masjid. And I love every one of them. Allah is my witness. I love every one of them. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, my message tonight is very, very simple. It is a a simple message, but one that is, that is critical. He said, We know none of you will go to Jannah until you believe. It's, it's critical. They have Iman. You have to have faith. You don't go to Jannah until you believe. And you will never believe until you love one another. And I want to talk uh, today about the power of love. Teddy Pendergrass, he said, that um, love is better, it's so good loving somebody and somebody loving you back. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. So love. The Prophet, uh, Umar, I love all of the Sahaba, but Umar is somebody very special. And the reason I love Umar so much that he kept it 100. Some of you older ones don't know what I mean by 100. Ask your children, they will tell you. But he kept it 100. He's always, he's always you know, uh, uh, tr truthful. And he said to the Prophet one day, Ya Rasulullah, la anta habu ilayya min kulli shayin ila nafsi. You are more beloved to me than everybody except myself. And the Prophet alayhi salat wa salam said, La, waladhi nafsi biyadhi hatta kunna habu ilayka min nafsika. No, 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 no. I swear by Allah, you don't have true faith until I am more loved by you even than yourself. Umar's response, Al-an, ya Rasulullah, la'anta habu ilayya min nafsi. Now, you're more beloved to me than myself. You may think that this is something insignificant. It's not, I'm going to show you. When the Prophet, alayhi salat wasalam, moved to Medina, he noticed that the people were um, pollinating date palms, manipulating, you know. And uh, he said, why are you doing this? He said, Yaro, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we get better crop. And the Prophet said, maybe, maybe it's better you don't do that. So they stopped. What happened? The crops failed. They came to the Prophet, alayhi salat wa salam, and said, see, Ya Rasulullah, this is what we're talking about. And the response of the Prophet was so great. Every president, every prime minister, every king, every general, every governor, every mayor, every head of police ought to hear what the Prophet said, and this is the key. He says, إِذَا مَتُكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ دِينِكُمْ فَخُذُوا بِهِ Whenever I tell you something of the religion, you take it. Don't argue about Yom al Qiyamah. Yom al Qiyamah is real. Don't argue about Jannah. Jannah is real. Don't argue about Anar. Anar is real. Don't argue about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't argue those things about Deen. Whatever I order you do to do it. He said, pray five times a day. We do it. He said, fast in the month of Ramadan. We do it. All of that, we do. He said, But whenever I order you to do something of my opinion, I am only a human being. Would that our leaders would understand that. You got to be real 
careful. The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, sent an expedition out. And he got one of the Ansar and, they, and he said to obey him. They went out. And this leader among these Muslims got angry at them and he said, did the prophet say that you should obey me? They said, yes. He said, I order you to build the fire and they built a fire. And then he said, I order you to go into the fire. And they hesitated. They hesitated and one said, you know what? We came to Islam to be saved from the fire. And the fire went out. And they brought that to the attention of the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. And listen to what he said, there's three versions. Each one of them scare me. He said, لَوْ دَخَلُوهَا مَا خَرَجُوا مِنْهَا had you gone in that fire, you would never have, you would not come out. Second one. La dakaluha ma kharajuha hatta yawmul qiyamah. Had you gone in that fire, you would never have come out until the day of judgment. And the last one was the scariest. La dakaluha ma kharaju minha abada. Had you gone in that fire, you never would have come out because obedience is only that which is right. Why say that? We live in a crazy society where people love the wrong people. What do you mean by that? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your love of a thing can blind you. Look at what's happening in Ukraine. It's one thing for leaders to say, yo, I want to destroy those people. But what about the soldiers? I've come to the conclusion that Muslims are not soldiers. We're the slaves of Allah. If you study military, you will study one thing that they try to get uniformity. They put you in a uniform. They have the same habits. You live together. All of that. And you have to obey your commander. Muslims are not like that. Muslims don't just obey their commander. Allah said in Quran, Allah Obey Allah, absolutely. Obey the messenger of Allah, absolutely. And obey those charged with authority among you. If you differ with your leaders, presidents, Dictators, kings, prime ministers, police officers, generals, all of that, if you differ with them, refer it to Allah and the Messenger. If it is you believe in Allah on the last day. These we're not we're not soldiers. We're slaves of Allah. So brothers and sisters, my message today is very simple. Um do you love me? Well, <laughs> I love you too. And I love Wallahi, I love all Muslims. I remember I was in um, Washington, D.C. a few years ago. Um, I did a program. And after the program, a brother came to me and said, Imam Siraj, there's a, a brother in the hospital. Can you make dua for him? I said, how far is the hospital from here? He said, not that far. I said, let's go. Why shouldn't I go? Who am I? Why should I not go to visit? comes. The right of a Muslim is five. One of them to visit the sick. So I went to the hospital. And the patient, he didn't see me. And the brother said, you know, Imam Siraj Wahaj is here to see you. He said, no, he's not. He said, yes, he is. I wish you could have seen his face when I came and said assalamu alaikum and spent time with him it may seem little but to him it was major one thing for a, a brother or sister to visit but another thing for a Muslim leader to come to visit you and I'm saying brothers and sisters I am so grateful to be a Muslim full of love for the believers and as Allah said, uh, as the Prophet said, that Allah said, 
Allah will say, Yawm al Ayna Mutahabuna Bijalali. We are those who love one another for my glory. A new Muslim or Muslim bin aged, I was in um, some city, I, I think it was um, uh, Connecticut, and, and they told me about a Muslim brother who had been one of the leaders of the Muslims, and he had had, he was suffering from Alzheimer. And a brother said, you know, Imam, the people said, can you bring Imam Saraj to our house? He said, I know, I'll ask him. And I said, of course, we go. And I stayed with him, I hugged with him, I prayed for him. And I'm saying, brothers and sisters, how blessed we are to be Muslim. If there is no life after death, this life makes no sense. Uh, the German philosopher, Arthur Schopenhauer, he's called the philosopher of pessimism. He said, life is an endless pain with a painful end. And you know what? He's right. I agree with him. If there is no life after death, you have to be very careful of what you read and what your children read. You know, sometimes you read things that seems like, you know, ain't no big deal. But it's a big deal. I'll give you an example. How many of you ever heard of Shakespeare? Raise your hand. Good. How many of you read Shakespeare? Good. Can I give you a little bit of Shakespeare? I'm going to give it to you anyway. I want you to go back to Shakespeare's, Shakespeare's Macbeth. Macbeth's wife just died. And he said, life is an endless pain. No, that's the other guy. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor play that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and is heard no more. It's a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. What? Did you hear that? You heard what Macbeth said? No, 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 no. That was Shakespeare said that. So when you read the, the novel, the short story, the movie, it's the author's opinion. Let me give you an example. According to the World Health Organization, 95% of the people of the world have ailments. 95% have ailments. One third of them have more than five ailments. One third have more than five ailments. There's a brother in my master that said, Imam, I take 29 different pills a day. 29 different pills a day. 29 different ailments. You look around, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so wonderful, so great, that he doesn't give you Jannah because, just because you make Salat and make Hajj. You know, the one tabi'in, uh, I think Atta ibn Abi Rabah, made over 70 pilgrimages to Mecca. So he doesn't only reward you for the fasting that you do and all of that, and the dhikr and all of that, but he, he gives you a reward in another unique way. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, taught us that Allah asks the angels, the angels of death. Now whenever Allah asks a question, he doesn't ask a question because he don't know the answer. He asks a question to teach us a lesson. He said, did you take the life of the beloved of my servant? I know what that means when my daughter, 21, year old, uh, 21 years old, 26, 27 years old, died, years ago died. I know what it's like to, to lose your, your beloved. He asked the angels, did you take the life of the, the beloved of my servant? Maybe some of you. They said, Habidaka. They praised you, Allah, and said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. What Allah said, Ibn li abdi baytin fil jannah. Build for my servant a house in jannah and call it the house of praise. Even because of our patience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you think that you love Allah more than Allah love you. You don't understand. It's impossible for us to love Allah more than he love us. I'm telling you. If you walk to Allah, Allah will run to you. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. And the forgiveness that he has is more than you can ever imagine. Yeah, but he promises, punishes us, yes. 
You better know that Allah is strong in punishment on the one hand. Don't play with it. Hellfire is real. At Nar Haq, Hellfire is real. Al Jannah is real. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives in ways that you can not even imagine. I give you one example. I'm almost finished. I want to finish before that thing says zero, zero, zero. I used to always go beyond the time. Now I try to go before the time. What was I saying? See, if, I'm going to see if you're listening. I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> no, I'm just, huh? Oh, yeah, good, good. Look, very good. When you get a chance, I want you to read um, Muslim Hadith Kitab al Iman, the Book of Faith. Chapter 1. Allah says, Shafa'at al Malaika. The angels have interceded. And the prophets have interceded. Like the Prophet, alayhi salat wa salam, Allahumma ummati ummati wa bakah. And the Prophet said, oh Allah, my, my ummah, my ummah, he started crying. Allah told Jibreel, Ithab ila Muhammad fa as'ahu ma yukika. Go and ask Muhammad, why is he crying? He's crying for the Ummah. He's crying for us. Yom Qiyamah, he's waiting to ask Allah for forgiveness. So the angels have interceded, and the Prophet has interceded, and the believers have interceded. And the only one left is the most merciful. See? Arhamu. Rahim, merciful. Arhamu, most merciful. And then Allah will say something extraordinary. He will say, Allah will take a handful of people out of hellfire who never did any good. Let me say that again because this is hard to imagine. He will take a handful of people out of hellfire who never did any good. So I ask you this question. How many people is that? A handful. Five? Ten. You know, years ago we used to sing a song that he's got the whole world in his hand. The hand of Allah. How many people? Now, I'm not going to depend upon that. I'm going to try to do all the good that I can do and stay away from the sin. So Allah said that? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. No, no. No. So, brothers and sisters, I, 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 I finished just to say that um, let me tell you something, Muhammad Ali, there's been a lot of discussion about Muhammad Ali, rahimahullah, and all the great things that he did, the fact that I love that he was a conscientious objector, ordered to go to fight in Vietnam, he said, I ain't going. How many of those Russian soldiers who's listening to Putin, he tells them to go and kill those people, and they do it. They got to face Allah on Yom Al-Qiyamah. You be careful. Yeah, you be careful. I don't care who you are. I'm going to obey. We're going to obey Allah and his messenger. May Allah bless you. May Allah love you. I love you. If you think you love me, you have no idea how much I love you. Assalamu alaikum.